This is our introduction to the menu system. It's the same with all of our recorders. That's one of the beauties of Clearview. The most common question you're going to get as an installer, and the thing you're going to want to pay the most attention to as an end user, is how to do playback. Say hypothetically you've had an incident. At the end of the day, with all the buzzers and gadgets that are built into this unit, it's just remember, it's still just a hard drive that's recording the images that are coming across your cameras. So let's look at recording now. First, you'll select either record for video recording or picture if you're doing picture recording. Below that is a calendar. You'll see that the images are green or shaded in in areas where there is recording. Where there's not recording, uh, you'll just see that they're empty. Let's go ahead and select a time. We can go ahead and select uh, your channels. In this case, we only have four channels. Or you can do a single channel view, and you'll notice the screen will populate across the bottom. So let's go ahead and choose a date on the calendar, for example, the 20th. If we're doing four camera view, we can certainly view all four at one time. Or if you like, we can just do a single camera and select that camera by itself. You'll notice the, the time across the bottom starts at midnight and ends at midnight on the far right side. And as it has recordings, you'll just see the time populate within that. If we click anywhere along that image, you're seeing a beautiful shot here of the beach. We can follow it real time through the recording, or if you like, we can certainly use our regular DVR controls to fast forward or to play or to stop altogether. Let's go ahead and play again. Okay. Now, once you've had an incident, for example, on channel three, this young man stealing some product from the table, well, all we have to do is cut on this, clip on the scissors and the videotape. Essentially, what you're doing is virtually cutting the clip at the very beginning. Once you're done, you can actually fast forward along later on in the clip or simply watch it and then go ahead and clip the clip again. You'll notice once you've reached the end of that clip, a new light will light up and that's the burner. The burner will actually show me the recording. At this point, we can plug in our USB drive. It will automatically detect and tell you how much room you have on it. And then you click the file that you want to record to it. Once I've done that, I click Start, and it will record that file directly onto the USB drive for me. Through the Setup Wizard, you'll also want to set the general settings. As all of our products are shipped from the East Coast of Florida, they usually default to Eastern Standard Time. You may first want to go in, change your time to your local time, and then verify the date. A couple other settings to point out here at the general tab is the time format. Perhaps you may want a 24-hour clock or a military clock instead of a 12-hour clock. You may also want to change the hard drive full. If your client is archiving hard drives, they can certainly set this from the overwrite to the stop record setting, and once it reaches the end of that drive, it will stop recording so you can remove it for archiving. By default, most people are using overwrite, meaning when the recording gets to the end, it just starts back over at the beginning. You'll notice the encode setting. There's two columns. The first one is on the left-hand side. That's your regular stream. And this is primarily what's recording to your hard drive. So a good resolution on your analog systems would be, say, D1. And your frame rate is basically whatever feels comfortable to your end user. Normally, real time is around 20 frames per second. It will top out at 30 frames per second on some of our recorders, and it'll top out at 7.5 on others. The column on the right is your extra stream. This is what's going to be streaming out to your cell phone or to your remote location. You may want to set that at a much lower resolution. For example, SIF resolution at 7 frames per second will work just fine over your 3G or 4G cellular signal. It'll also work very well on your low-speed internet connection. Your schedule can be very complex or also very simple. Out of the box, the recorder is set up to record 24-7. That's usually fine for most people. Some people would rather it record only when there's motion detected to save a lot of room on your hard drive space. You don't need special cameras to do this. The recorders are smart enough to know when motion has been detected or not. To change it is very simple. Uncheck regular, check motion. You'll notice the bar at the bottom has gone from green to yellow, and now it's recording only when there's motion detected. It's that easy. Keep in mind the schedule is designed around a per channel and per day basis, so you may want to also go down and make sure that you've selected all channels and all days of the week to keep your schedule the same throughout the week. 
You may certainly check individual days. So maybe you have a weekend schedule versus a during the week schedule. Very, very simple to set up. Under the advanced field, you're going to find accounts. The default accounts are your admin with the password of admin and a guest with the password of guest. We strongly recommend the end user change those passwords. We do have the ability to overwrite them if there's a problem or the end user forgets their admin account password. And we'll cover that in a later session. First, you'll notice there are groups, and within those groups are users. An admin group would be someone who'd have full administrative rights to everything on the unit. A user would only be able to do playback and view cameras. For example, if you have a covert camera, you may want to add a user for the nanny that cannot see that camera. Very, very easy to do. First and foremost, we'd add a new user. We'd give that user a specific name, like for example, nanny. We may want to make that user reusable. It comes in very handy when you're adding users that are going to be using a phone app, for example, or someone who may need to log in from multiple locations. We give them a password, whatever you'd like it to be. We can confirm the password. You can even write a memo to yourself. This is for our nanny. This is a special account, whatever you'd like to make for yourself. You would add them to a group. You'll see if they're an admin, they have permissions to do a lot of different things. Because we're making this user a user, now they can only view and do replay on certain channels. For example, channel one would be my nanny cam. All I do is uncheck the camera and certainly uncheck it from playback. And now when that nanny user logs in, they will not see that camera. It's that easy. Let's go back to clearviewcctv.com and talk about some of the valuable tools that are available on the website. Under the tools section, you'll notice the DVR storage calculator. With this, you can generally calculate about how much storage time you're going to need or you're going to have available for you on your system. First off, you select the video stream that you're looking for, which is by default 264, the camera resolution, the video quality, how many cameras you want, the desired amount of storage days, the frame rate per channel. Again, the average on that is about 20. How many hours a day the camera will be on? Regular recording will be 24. Depending on your traffic in the area, about 12 hours is what you can expect on motion. And this will tell me at the bottom, my expected storage is roughly, oop, total bandwidth required, I'm going to need roughly 200 gigabytes to store this data. It's that easy. Some of the other valuable tools that are available on our website are links out to the phone apps. So if I click on the iPhone or iPad app, it's going to take me directly to the website. And I'm going to see there are two apps available. The first is the Clearview full version. It's available right now for the price of $9.99. It gives you full functionality, but it also gives you the ability to do playback at the handheld level. Pretty awesome. The other is the direct version which is available to only view your cameras for the price of $4.99. There is an Android version as well that's available from that same category. Under Tools, you'll see the Android app. That'll take you out to Google Play, and you'll see, of course, $9.99, and that is a full-blown version. That includes the backup utility. Another important tool is the Download Center. You're going to find all of your manuals and user guides for all of our products. This is also the place you'll find all the cut sheets. So if you're putting bids together and you need more detailed information on the products, it's all right here. Also in the Download Center, you're going to find the free version of our ICRSS Pro app. This is a great tool that's available on the PC and on the Mac that will allow you to view multiple recorders simultaneously. So say, for example, your client has a chain of restaurants or perhaps a chain of gas stations. They can certainly put all of their recorders under one window and be able to view all of their cameras simultaneously. This is a very robust tool, and I strongly recommend for your clients with multiple recorders, this is the way to go. Other important features of the ICRSS utility include being able to log in independently to each recorder and reconfigure or add accounts. Pretty much all the functionality you have when you're sitting in front of the unit, you'll have remotely through that tool. Now, keep in mind, you can also connect to your DVR or NVR through either Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, or Mozilla Firefox. So thank you again for your valuable time. And thanks for choosing Clearview, a clear choice. Your home with a seven-year warranty and lifetime technical support. 
I'm Pat Carter. Have a great day.